The reading is taken from John 13, from verses 1 to 17, reading the International Version. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come from, for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Peter, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not everyone of you for he knew who was that one was clean when he had finished washing their feet he put on his clothes and returned to his place do you understand what i have done for you he asked them you call me teacher and lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very true, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. 17 and last, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Give God a clap of praise, somebody. Just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm going to have um, another hymn before the word. There is a Redeemer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Congregation, it is with great joy that I introduce our preacher tonight. He is the Reverend Dr. Confidence Banzer. He is a URC minister serving in the Hemel Hempstead local area group of churches. I believe upper club team members would remember him. Some years ago, he preached at upper club team and Stamford Hill when we were worshiping together at Stamford Hill. So Stamford Hill friends also should know him. He's an academic, traveled the world, and um, he's a man that loves the Lord with all his heart was my lecturer some years ago, and still is. <laughs> so he's a man that I'm very proud of, very honorable man of God. 
Dr. Confidence Congregation, Congregation Dr. Confidence. Over to you, my dear brother. Thank you, Reverend John, for um, that inspiring uh, introduction. And again, I want to extend my heartfelt uh, gratitude to you and the elders of your church for inviting me again to come and share in your worship service. I remember when I when I came to you, I think that was the last year or last few years, thereabouts. I I said when I first met Reverend John as my student, then well he said he's still my student anyway. Uh, I just had a very strong edge that this is going to be a relationship for life. Uh, and I told him, I told him, and I think it's going to be. Um, he has become my pastoral support. Uh, pastoral support is when you see your ministers or pastors and they are always ministering to you, someone also ministers to them. So Reverend John ministers to me um, when I need him. And his ministration has been so, so overwhelming, so inspirational. And for me, it, he has been a blessing and he will continue to be a blessing for me and my family. And so when he invited me to come again to share in your worship today, um, I didn't tell him. Actually, I was having an appointment somewhere, but I couldn't say no to him. So I, I had to cancel that appointment. Now, interestingly, he asked me to preach on humility. And I kind of, why Reverend John, He's asking me to preach on humility because when I met him, I he, he demonstrated that the quality of someone who is humble. But I I, I felt strongly after reading to the, the the text that he sent to me carefully over and over again. I that sort of sermon in this critical time that we are in. Because humility is a word that we hardly come across these days. And our actions as Christians are, in most cases, um, not a good sign of people who are humble. And most of the, most of the attitude we show at our workplaces, most of the attitude we show in marriage, and most of the attitude we show um, in our relationship with people um, actually has no element of humility. And I, I believe strongly that most of the problems that we have in our homes, in our marriages, in our families, in our relationships, um, is as a result of our unwillingness to be humble to one another. Um, and so, Reverend John, I, I appreciate this opportunity to share uh, my thoughts on humility in this critical time that we are in um, with the congregation and also myself. Already we know that we, we are in the season. Um, the Holy Week is already getting to an end. Jesus had already been in Jerusalem. We had the, the, the Palm Sunday, this last Sunday. Most of us are saying we are looking toward um, the cross, the crucifixion. But the narrative, the gospel narrative does not end on the cross. It ends in the resurrection. And so we are looking towards the resurrection of Christ, the Lord, Jesus, the one in whose name we have gathered here, he brought us together. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. 
And so as I, as I journey into the sermon, I pray that we will again evaluate ourselves. You need to just put that measurement on your life and ask whether you are humble or not. I review a lot of CVs for people who are hiring or employers and all that. And typically of me, when I fail your CV for shortlisting, it means that you put the I'm humble. Now, because by the time I finish reading your CV, I know whether you are humble or not. You don't need to tell me. When I meet you, I know this is a humble person. You don't need to tell me. You don't need to tell anyone. That is how we need to live in this world. We have to live and reflect the image of Christ in all humility. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? After he had washed their feet, and put on his clothes. He withdrew back to the table and asked them, do you actually understand what I did? That is the question. Let us pray. Our glorious Lord, we thank you that indeed you are with us at this moment. And I pray that we have of understanding on all of us so that we may understand the world. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus had done something again that blew the mind of the disciples. The times are going, the hours are running, and they now got to the Last Supper. And the Lord just stood up and did something that he had not done before, washing the feet of the disciples. Now, Typically, you, you, you can imagine the scenario, the, I mean, the atmosphere. This is the teacher. We are talking about God here. We are talking about Jesus. We are talking about the Christ. We are talking about the Messiah, the Great One. Is the one we are talking about here. Just going so low as a slave, as a servant, washing the feet of near disciples. I believe that Peter was right when he decided to resist. Because obviously, what, what is happening here? What, 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 is, what, what is the Lord doing? In the world's order of things, everything is wrong for the superior person to go that low to serve the servant or the junior rank. And we see this across the board, in the church, in our places of work, in our families, there is hierarchy everywhere. And that sort of hierarchy provides the environment for superiority. And so there are certain things that some people have to do it. There are others that others will have to do it. So that, that, is, that is how the world is governed. That is how the world itself operates. And I believe Jesus himself is aware of this. And that is why 
when you go to Luke chapter 17, and I read verse 7 to 9, listen to what he says. Who among you will say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field? Come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later, you may eat and drink. Now, that is what the Lord himself says. That who amongst you, the boss of the house, who, who, who sit in the house, and, and the servant will come back from wherever, and then he will say, sit down, let me serve you. No way. It's rather the servant who served the master, while the master will be enjoying himself in the sofa. Beloved, Jesus is teaching us something. We ought to be humble in life. And if there's one thing that I can say is that Jesus is our perfect example of humility. Jesus is our perfect example of humility. Now, let's go back to Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human life, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the one we are talking about here. When I look back and again see a lot of Africans in the church today, my mind goes back home. In Ghana, I know it might be the same thing in Sierra Leone, it might be the same thing in Nigeria, it might be the same thing somewhere else. When you see people bowing like this to greet, it means they are bowing down to somebody of higher um, 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 position. You, 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 you don't see the old man or the boss or the big man bowing down and exchanging pleasantries with people below them. Now, typically, that is how, that is how we, we understand power. And so you don't expect you, the secretary, that you should stand up when your boss is passing, and then you don't bow down and greet him or her. Now, Another thing that is common, again, and, and it, not only in Ghana or Africa, it's elsewhere. When you hear people say, sir. Now, when people say, sir, they are just, they are trying to pay that sort of homage, trying to say, oh, boss. Now, that is how we understand greatness. But for us as Christians, this evening, what I want us to understand is that it should be both ways. Humility must come from the small and the big in society. And that is what Jesus has taught us this evening. That we ought to respect and humble ourselves to each other and for one another 
not only because we are in a position of strength and power, but because we are all human beings created in the image of God. This is what Jesus is teaching you and I tonight. My brother, my sister, today is Monday, Thursday, and Jesus is already preparing to face the cross. Jesus is doing all this in the spirit of humility. He's not, he's not proud. People who are proud are not humble. People who are not nice are not humble. People who, 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 are, who are careless are not humble. Jesus is so humbled to the point that even though he is God, he is prepared to go down the rough way for you and for me. What are we to learn from that? Whoever we are, whatever position God gives us, how prominent, how important we are, what is Christ teaching us tonight? One, I believe Christ is teaching us to be mindful of others. We should be mindful of others. We should be mindful of how others feel. Life should not always be about you. Life must not always end with you. Life must always not favor you. You must be prepared to let others also feel good and feel nice. Don't always be the victim. That is humility. Make it something of your own that you make others feel comfortable and good. Number two, that humility is being considerate. You need to be considerate. That is what Jesus just taught us. We need to be considerate with one another. You, 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 you can be right, but for the good of the other, you have to let go and let God. Jesus is, is again giving us a new dimension to life. That humility or a humble person is the one who does things and says things in love. When you are when you are when you are humble. You always want to speak to people in love. You always want to speak to people uh, in, in all gentleness. That is the way of humility. A humble person is ever ready and always willing to say, I'm sorry. I mean, of late, and that is why, again, this is very important for us as we go through this, this, this season of Holy Week, to say sorry has become a bitter pill for Christians. We, 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 will not, we will never, if we will say sorry, then let's hit the highway. That is not what Jesus came to teach us. You are not saying sorry necessarily because you did something wrong. You are saying sorry because you are a child of God because you want peace to prevail, because you want reconciliation, because you have love in you. That is why you say sorry. Many of us in, in, in our marriages today, we are having problems because the woman is not ready to tell the man I'm sorry. The man is not ready to say to the, to, to, to the woman I'm sorry. Sometimes, even if deep down their heart, they, they, they know that if not done the right thing. If we can learn to say sorry, we, we, we have no problem. Because that is, for me, the biggest sign of a humble person. A humble person is the one who is willing to say sorry. And it's a position of strength. It's not weakness. To say sorry, it, it doesn't mean you are weak. When you say sorry, it shows that you are a child of God. 
it shows that you are humble. It shows that you have overcome the enemy. Because it's an obligation. Now, this is how Jesus concluded that narrative. You also should wash one another's feet. That is what he said. So it is an obligation. It is a command. And we have to respond and obey that command. It's not a choice. He says, you also should wash one another's feet. You also be humble. You also be considerate. You also say sorry. You also be prepared to forgive. You also show love. That is humility. My brother, my sister, tonight, as we go through the rest of the week, the Holy Week, let's try to create an atmosphere um, for humility around us, in our families, in our places of work. One thing you should know, and I should know, is that people will not ask you whether you are humble or not. They won't ask you. They will observe you, whether you are humble or not. And don't forget, Jesus' humility was not towards um, the 11, the, the, the fine 11 apostles or disciples. He did the same thing to even the one who was to betray him. Judas, even the one, the one he should have called his enemy. He did the same thing for him. So what excuse do we have? We have no excuse. Whether we call the person our enemy or not, that is exactly what Jesus taught us. And he says elsewhere that if you love your own friends, people who love you, you are doing nothing. Absolutely. You love those rather who hate you, people who don't want to face you, who don't want to see your face. Humility is a virtue, it's a strength, and it comes with blessing. When you show signs of humility in this life, people who are humble, they receive blessing from God. They will find favor with men. They will always see people, meet people who will be willing to help them. Doors will open for them when they knock. And I pray that you will pray that this virtue of humility will come to you tonight. That the Holy Spirit will reign this virtue of humility on you tonight so that your life will change. Your life will be transformed. There will be peace in your family. There will be peace in your home. There will be peace in your marriage. There will be peace at your workplace. There will be peace everywhere you go. May the peace of the Lord that transcends all human understanding remain and abide with us all now and on. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you again for the sacrifice you are making for us. And we ask that, Lord, tonight you will touch again our lips, our minds, our hearts, that we shall receive your word and live according to it. We thank you. We know you are with us. You will always be with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Confidence, for the message. Pray that God would continue to bless you and bless your ministry. We ask God's blessing also from your wife and children. And we ask God to bless your churches. May God continue to use you as a wonderful instrument of his kingdom and of his gospel. 
Tomorrow, we continue with our Good Friday service. The preacher is Dr. Devon Gavi, and Sister Nyoma Chima would lead the worship. So pray for them as they come to take us to the throne of the Lord and um, also bring the word, Dr. Gavi and, of course, um, Sister Nyoma Chima and for all who would be taking part into moral service. And on Sunday, our Easter Sunday service, again, um, 10, 15, the preacher is your humble servant, John Macaulay, and the worship leader would be Sister Olive Macaulay on Easter Sunday. So pray for Sister Olive and myself, as we, and all will be taking part in our Easter day service. I think those are the announcements for tonight. We'll continue um, with some more um, in the morning. And I'll ask my dear brother, Kit Small, as you all are aware, I've dedicated 2021 to the brothers of the churches. And from time to time, I ask the brothers to give the blessing. And tonight, Brother Kit Small will bring the closing prayer and the blessing. Brother Keith, over to you. Let us pray. Amen. Give God thanks for this evening. How he's blessed the service and covered us all. We give thanks for the preacher, for his word. Amen. For the knowledge we have gained. We ask to continue to be blessed and sanctified in Jesus' name. We ask that all the different areas of prayer requests and supplications be heard tonight and that a special blessing and anointing will be upon us all, yes. even for those who are unable to be here this evening through work or other commitments, but somehow that word will reach through to them. Your message has many ways of traveling. So once again, we say all the honor, all the glory, all the praise is unto you, our Father. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give you his peace in your going out and your coming in, in your lying down and your rising up, in your labor and your leisure in your laughter and your tears. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Keith.